Next up, with the rise of COVID-19, the importance of disease traceability has become paramount here at home. And that same notion still rings true for our food supply. While the concept of traceability isn't new, there's been a mindset shift in recent years. In August of 2018, Cattle Trace Incorporated was created as a private not-for-profit corporation to secure, maintain, and manage data collected for disease traceability. As we rang in the new year, Cattle Trace Incorporated formally changed its name to U.S. Cattle Trace as the program continues to expand from its current pilot program. Market Journal's Bill Dodd has the story. Only a few years back, finding cattle that may have been vulnerable to disease was a very time-consuming process that required information from auction houses, feedlots, packing plants, so on and so forth. But in June of 2018, the Cattle Trace program was created to help streamline the process of tracking diseases in live cattle. In that time, several other states, including Nebraska, have signed on to the program. However, there is one caveat. The program is completely voluntary. This has prompted many independent cattle ranchers to decline joining because many feel it's not worth the time it takes to comply with the program or for fears of invasions of privacy. The, the, the three items I would say that probably concern people the most about joining the program are the questions. Let's, let's rephrase it that way, questions they ask. Tremendous amount of concerns about data privacy, government intrusion, and U.S. Cattle Trace is a nonprofit 501c3 company that owns the database. And that's extremely important as we talk about data privacy because it's free from Freedom of Information Act. So the government go, or the, the information goes into the private database. And yes, the producer board of directors, they set those policies and procedures, how that data is accessed. But it's really kept confidential and only used in a disease outbreak. So how exactly does the cattle trace system work? As it happens, the USDA already requires animals traveling between states to have an ID tag and vet certificate. However, the rule excludes animals under 18 months. Furthermore, cattle tags vary. The Cattle Trace program seeks to use one type of tag, an ultra-high-frequency tag that would streamline the data collection. I show up at our feed yard today or tomorrow, whatever, and we have an animal that uh, shows signs and symptoms from foot and mouth disease. Well, let's talk about the worst case scenario. You enter in that individual ID number into the database, and then it'll be able to say, okay, who is its last contact? We can't really ask the cow. The cow won't talk to us. So we enter in his number. It goes into the database, and then it'll quickly be able to tell us who was the last contacts or that contact tracing, who was the last contacts with that animal. Not only that, but where are they now? And then you go find those contacts, those other animals, and exactly who have they contacted and where are those animals now. Disease traceability will not prevent a disease outbreak. That's that's clear. I think we all know that. Mm -hmm. But what it will do, hopefully, is be able to very quickly isolate the animals that are at risk, quarantine them, and hopefully stop the spread of the disease, just like we're trying to do a social distancing, quarantines, that type of stuff. There are so many parallels, so many parallels between the COVID-19 situation, everything that's surrounding that, and how that could apply to an animal disease um, situation and then how specifically the, the answers that Cattle Trace is providing um, for the, uh, the cattle industry. By keeping better tabs on diseases feared most by cattle producers such as BSE, foot and mouth disease, TB, and a slew of others, Cattle Trace is effectively benefiting producers, packers, and consumers all in one fell swoop. If we look back a few years to the outbreak of bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or mad cow disease as many people know it, the cattle markets in the United States took a staggering blow. With the finding of BSE uh, was announced in the United States back in 2003, beef markets effectively disappeared, beef export markets effectively disappeared overnight because the U.S. was no longer a BSE-free country. Well, as we investigated and determined the source of the cow and determined the extent of the, uh, of the infection and effectively controlled it, um, we regained our status as a reliable supplier of beef. But we didn't regain those markets as quickly. That type of contamination and subsequent market fears are precisely what the Cattle Trace program was designed to curb. To be able to get back, to regain that market share that we lost because our, our trading partners across the, uh, across the world didn't want our product, or one, because it was quote unquote, or at an, 
had a BSC animal in our system, and we didn't have a traceability system in it. But it took us roughly seven years to regain that market share back on a dollars per head basis. So cut it in half, and then not only that, it took us seven years to regain that. But really, our vision is to build a disease traceability system, an interstate, a highway system, if you will, that's built specifically for disease traceability, for disease traceability only. But we want to be able to build this highway system, this disease traceability system, this infrastructure, build it in such a way that value-add companies can come along and use that highway system to exchange information up and down the value chain. We're currently supporting several different efforts of private companies that are wanting to do just that, and they're wanting to, for lack of a better word, leverage then the infrastructure we're trying to build or, or use that system to be able to exchange that information up and down. So the second thing I'd say is we got the exports and then we got this. So our vision is we're going to create this platform uh, for future value-add opportunities. One more question many producers are asking is probably the most obvious question of all, and that is, how much will it cost me to get involved in this program? Brandon tells me that answer will vary depending on your role in the cattle industry. I'm asking for a dollar per head participation fee. With that dollar per head, we send you a tag. So however you want to say that, um, basically a dollar per head or dollar per tag to participate. Feed yards, feeding companies such as myself um, have all uh, stepped up to the plate and said, hey, we're willing to invest in infrastructure and the readers and the antennas to actually be able to trace the cattle. Uh, sale barns, we participate in them, work with them to be able to um, install readers in their place. And then the packers as well have stepped up to install the readers and antennas at their place. So it depends on where you're at within the industry, um, but from a cow-calf standpoint, really it's a dollar per head to participate in the pilot project phase. While the country continues to contain the current threat of the coronavirus, the visionaries of the U.S. Cattle Trace are working diligently to make sure if a pandemic like this ever hits our cattle supply chain, the cattle industry will be prepared to locate, isolate, and terminate the problem. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.